rain and we've got snow on the ground here in Austin. Oh, wow. Everything I didn't even realize that it snowed in Texas like that. It, it, it doesn't. But last year it did and now this year. So crazy, crazy. Well, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to hop on the Life Coach Act podcast today. As you know, we love talking about all things mental health, mindfulness, spirituality, health, and well-being, and you are the perfect guest to have on the episode today. We're going to talk a lot about energy healing. We're going to talk a lot about how you're a psychic and how amazing that is. We're going to talk a little bit about my experience working with you, which has been nothing short of amazing. Um, So to all the people that are listening on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, my guest today is Amira Hall. Amira is a psychic not psycho, with 22 years experience, over 23,000 clients around the globe, and 300 plus trainings. Uh, Amira, thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, it's my pleasure. I'm super excited about what's going to come out in our conversation today, because with me, there's always some surprise or twist. That's it. You never know with you. So tell us a little bit about what you do as a psychic. How do you have these psychic powers? And yeah, I guess we'll start there. How's that sound? Yeah, I love it. Well, honestly, it's been a very long time that I've never admitted that I was a psychic. I tended to call myself an intuitive and then a spirit medium, and I've called myself every name in the book. (laughs) And so that's, that's pretty, pretty wide. But here's the thing. I believe we're all psychic. And that word is getting thrown around and bantered around in ways that it frightens a lot of people. And really psychic means the unseen or invisible, right? So I'm accessing information. I kind of relate it to being able to look into, oh, let's say a back office or an archive of information that's stored in our energy records. And so I see... I'm able to see and connect with thoughts and feelings and patterns. And so it's in a way I called, I gave myself a new title. I'm an interdimensional analyst. (laughs) How do you like it? Amazing. Interdimensional analyst. So how do you see the interdimension? Well, if I could ask you to imagine a rose or if you've got one on your table or a flower and then close your eyes and visualize it, That's how we see, and we all see. Call it a visualization, call it an idea, an inspiration. I've trained myself to be able to zoom in on a specific, let's say, entry point. I call them pictures. It could be a thought, it could be a belief, it could be a memory. So when I can dial in, it's like I look into when I look at the energy centers, the chakras or and the energy field, it's almost like I see a kaleidoscope, a spinning wheel of all of these incredible colors and patterns. And then when I zoom in or one color jumps out at me, I sort of go down that rabbit hole. It's like stepping into a stargate where all the information starts unraveling and I get a story. So the story is then translated in my head and I reveal the story. It might be a metaphor. Yeah. It might be um, uh, and a literal experience that the person's had. Right. So sometimes we have a little discussion trying to uh, define or interpret. Is it a, a real life situation? Is it a metaphor? Or is your soul trying to give you, uh, you know, your next step information? So it's kind of a translation. And I think... Over the years, as I've developed an expertise and being able to, as much as a, as a natural ability we all have, I've been able to refine it and tune it in. And that's what I teach people to do. Amazing. Because we're all highly intuitive, call it psychic. And when we access those parts of ourself, there's so much more information that's available to us. Yeah. You know, I would say this has a lot to do with the spiritual realm, right? I mean, when we start to link quantum physics and science and brain waves and the natural law of attraction and manifestation, I mean, there are a lot of pieces to the puzzle that fit perfectly. And a psychic is part of the spiritual realm. I mean, we send out information from our brain through our brain waves into the quantum field, into the ether, into the universe, if you want to call it the universe. And 
if we can feel the right feelings, the high frequency emotions of joy, love, gratitude, appreciation, what we're trying to manifest will come back to us. And I am a firm believer. However, however, there are a lot of people out there that don't believe in this. There's a lot of people that don't believe in the law of attraction. There's a lot of people that don't believe that we can manifest our goals and dreams through intentional thinking and high frequency emotions. So what do you say to all the doubters out there? And what proof do you have that proves them wrong? Well, you might not like this, but I don't need to prove it to anybody. And after all this time, I'm so convinced and I've had to prove it to myself because I came from a corporate background and not trusting my intuition and doubting myself or hesitating or being uncertain. When I was finally able to dial into the specific information, is it any different than being able to access a certain program or software? right? If we have the right tools, we can, let's say with Word, a simple thing like that, we can type and send information through the air, right? Well, science is refined now uh, compared to when I, this started happening for me 22 years ago. Now, science is coming and it, it really showing us how this is all stored information. And, you know, there's a lot of different psychics. And, and I want to just back up on that thought because, you know, some people misconstrue psychic with or associate that with only card readers. I'm, I'm not going there. I'm using my natural innate God-given abilities of clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairsentience, which we all have. It's part of our natural GPS system. Right. And our soul's path. Yes, this is a spiritual journey. As we start awakening and become more desensitized to being programmed mm -hmm. by everything in our environments, all of these natural abilities just start coming on online. Yeah. And right. so it's, it's a wonderful process of discovery. And I, I really feel, you know, going back to what your comment was about mental health and, and the work you do, I often see it. People that get depressed, I know for myself it's happened, it's, it's stuck energy. It's not even mine. Right. And so the wonderful liberating thing was once, okay, if it's energy and I can clear it without meds or drugs or, you know, destroying everything in my life, then that's great. That's a win. Just show me how. And so that's where I started embarking on teaching people to clear their energy right. field, quick, fast, and easy so that they can come back online and be that inspirational or that be on purpose with manifesting. Yeah. And, and coming back to the doubters, I think doing a reading, like I don't know what your experience was, Zach. Uh, we haven't had a chance since I spoke to you about that. But that's how a lot of doubters come back to really believing. They need proof themselves. Right. And when I connect with them and identify things or articulate circumstances, and they go, holy geez, how did she know that? Unreal. I never told her. Unreal. You know? And I had such an incredible experience uh, on, our, on our session last week. I'm just so thankful that I was able to meet you and come across uh, who you, who you are and what you do. And I want to take a step back and talk about a lot about manifestation because I feel like these manifestation and our energy is very interconnected. I myself have manifested um, amazing things in my life. Amazing, amazing things from my dream lifestyle to my dream car to, you know, a relationship with, with friends and family that are just constantly growing and getting stronger. And I, I believe it to be true. I believe that if I meditate and if I, I feel joy, love, appreciation, and gratitude in my heart, and I believe that if I am going to get what I want, then subconsciously my thoughts, decisions, and actions are going to align with what I want, ultimately creating that, bringing it to fruition, right? So I, I don't need to prove to anyone either that manifestation and the natural law of attraction is true. I don't need to prove it to anyone, but if they were to look, they would see that, you know, th these are the receipts. Um, and, and I'm someone who loves to study the natural law of attraction and meditation has, is the foundation for that, right? In order for us to manifest what we want, our goals and dreams, we have to be present. We have to live as if we already have what we want, whether it's 
a, a, a beautiful house that's paid off, or if it's our dream job or our dream relationship, you have to live, you have to feel, you have to believe that it's already true. And it's easier said than done. So when it comes to yeah. the, the phrase easier said than done, I want to ask you a question. How do you as a psychic, as an energy healer, um, sharpen your skills and get better at what you do each and every day? Thank you. That's a great question. And I want to say that, you know, I totally a hundred thousand percent believe in the law of attraction. I believe we're here as creators. That's our spiritual purpose. We're here to learn about who we are. And unfortunately or fortunately, we've all been programmed. And what we're not realizing is that as an energy being that came into form, we're programmed and we're, we're camouflaged our true purpose and our true abilities. And so we have to dig through that or begin releasing it so that our natural self can shine. And so that's why, and I mean, I started this journey just simply to heal me. After a near-death experience, I was in a really dark, destructive place in my life. And I hung out there for, I couldn't get out of it. I dare, didn't go see a psychologist because I figured they're going to lock me up and throw away the keys. When I started hearing things and seeing things, all of my abilities got so turned on. It was like having a, you know, a speaker blasting in your ear super high. You can't really hear it, right? So I had to learn myself. I had to prove it to me, Zach. I had to prove it that this was worth a damn and that it worked. And this was way before the law of attraction came into vogue and everybody was talking about it. But, you know, they've oversimplified it. And I feel like the general um, message behind it, they've left out some important ingredients in the recipe. And that is your vibration. Mm. So they talk about feelings, which is key, as you mentioned. But all of your feelings, I mean, if you've got these unconscious blocks that are sort of tucked away in the back closet that you don't know about and you're not looking at it and it doesn't matter to you because you're just focused and you're hell bent on getting that beautiful home or whatever it might be, you're missing out. And there's that, that skeleton rattling in the closet that is dragging you down yeah. and it is unconsciously lowering your vibration. Yeah. So the trick is how do we get to that crap that's behind us that we have no ideas right. there. And that's the part I work at because it's the unconscious quantum act part of you that's hidden from view. Yeah. And it's real simple when you have the right tools, you know, you can't vacuum your house, the whole house with a little handheld back, right? That's just going to take forever. You know, it'll work in little one square at a time, but it's like that, you know, um, meditation is key. Um, listening as, as the intuition starts to come alive is not doubting it and to taking specific action when you are hearing that little uh -huh. voice. Amazing. So when it comes to past trauma, because that's something that you and I uh, discussed on our session last week when you were you know, diving deep into my subconscious um, and, and feeling my energy and reading my energy. And it was, you know, it was very eye-opening. But as someone who likes to be aware of not only what's going on right here right now, but what's going to be happen in the future and what's happened in the past. How can I, or how can anybody that's listening be more aware of, of that skeleton in the closet? Like what if they have past traumas that they don't even know of? And is that a common occurrence where people have past traumas that they kind of block out that they don't even realize is there? Yes, we all have trauma. We all have experiences that have derailed us and those are stored in your archive, accept it or not, believe it or not. Is that you ringing uh, or is that me? You. No worries though. <laughs> okay. That's sorry about that. Um, yeah, I, um, I, we, we can't see or know what we don't know. And so I think it's a journey of first making the body feel safe and the mind being retrained because nobody's helped us train our minds and our little monkey minds are jumping around all over the place. That's what spirit does. When we think of going to Hawaii, we go there. It's a flash, but our spirit literally leaves the body. If you've ever come in the house and put down your keys and then you're going to leave next time, you can't 
find your keys. Where the heck did you put them? In that moment, you were out of your body. Your spirit was somewhere else, focused on something else. And same thing when you're barreling down the highway and you miss your exit. It's because you were at the grocery store thinking about what you're going to pick up or that meeting that you're going to have. You left your body for an instant or most of it. You're, you're a part of your unconscious or your subconscious self is driving the vehicle because it's rote memory. So, you know, this is the point where we have to retrain ourselves, not only to be mindful, but to have our spirit be in the present. And that is the most powerful place to manifest whatever it is we want. Because I see the energies on the planets are sh is shifting. And we're coming into a phase where as you think, you create. And so where it might have taken a month or two to manifest something, it's going to happen in a flash because you were thinking it and, oh my gosh, somebody just showed up and said the very same thing and invited you to an opportunity. So it's happening fast. So equally as fast, we're also destroying things in our life, destroying right. or missing opportunities. Or So it's, it's, it's we're just... I've, nobody's ever been here at this time, I think, in the evolution of our mm -hmm. spirit and the planet. So I know that we have to be more and more diligent, vigilant on paying attention. If you're anxious and your mind is, you're just losing your mind, you're too far into the future. What's going to happen? Well, what if this doesn't work? Well, what if that's, you know, not true? You know, getting clear, being able to be present and focus on what you see as the absolute next right. step is key. Right. And I love that. The trauma is when we have the trauma, it's basically we're connecting to a memory or a feeling that is in a past experience. Uh -huh. It's not real. And I'm not saying it didn't happen, but it's your memory and your energetic connection to that point in time that keeps it alive in right. this present and time. So we have to purge mm -hmm. that. And, and it's like, how do you remove malware or viruses from your computer? You run a software, right? right? You deprogram it. And that's what I teach people yeah. how to do. Interesting. So I, lo I love how you mentioned about uh, we're kind of destroying ourselves too. I forgot exactly the verbiage used to articulate that thought, but it was like we manifest good things, but we also manifest bad things. The natural law of attraction works both ways. You don't just manifest good things. You can manifest bad things too. And to all the people that are listening, that are like, whoa, I didn't realize that. I want you to really start to become hyper aware of your thought patterns, right? Are you in a positive feedback loop or are you in a negative feedback loop? Because a lot of the times when we have a shitty day, we allow it to, we allow the shitty day to turn into a, a shitty sleep. And then the shitty sleep turns into a shitty morning. And then the shitty morning resonates and comes in throughout the rest of our day. So be really careful about your thoughts. Be really strong minded and exercise your free will to choose positive thoughts only. What do you think about that, Amira? Well, I think again, meditation is key and it's a form of meditation that I'm speaking about is a, is a tool or, or a practice that actually purges what we don't know is there. Because I see a lot of people going out in, in the world and they've got this happy face on and they're perfectly groomed and they're bragging about all the shit they manifested mm -hmm. and all the good things. Meanwhile, they go home and their relationship is in tatters right. or, you know, they're, they're really not being honest with themselves. Or even if they are thinking, I'm positive, I'm optimistic, I've got these affirmations plastered all over my mirrors, but then all these things are not so good happening right? So it's, it's like their split personality. They want to believe those good things are happening, but there's something inside of them. They don't know where that is. That's just tugging them back. Yeah. And, and that's maybe a sense, like I've tried everything. In fact, I'm thinking out, out right now that most of the people I work with are highly successful and they're well-educated. They've got successful, amazing businesses, but they hit a wall. And they can't figure out, because they're really smart, what the hell did they do wrong? Where did they go wrong? And so they and analyze it and analyze it and analyze it. And it might come back to a memory or something that happened so long ago 
man, it is in the back, back, back archives. And they have no direct tie to it, so they don't think it's haunting them. But it is. It's coming up for removal. Yeah. And, and because we're on a journey, yeah. we're on a journey. It's not a stop and start or you, you hit a button and you're finished. <laughs> so what's the process you go through? I, if you can explain as simply and as succinctly as possible, what's the process that you go through to help people accomplish that? The very first thing that we all need to learn, including myself, it's a continual practice is being grounded. Yeah. And I ground from the base of my spine. So it's like, I've got the base of my spine. Imagine right now I've got a USB wire plugged right down all the way to the center of the earth. So if anybody blasts me, you know, with a criticism or a big surprise, or, you know, somebody shuts something down now or something, I've got a way to, for the body to discharge that energy and that energetic surge doesn't get stuck or locked in my body. So that's the first thing. Second thing I work with people is clearing the center of their head because you can't be clairvoyant or inspired or have a vision to where you want to go or what you want to create if that space isn't clear. So if it's filled with worries or lists of things to do or, um, you know, constantly looking at your phone, did I miss something? Did I miss something? The distractions. We've got to clear that inner space. And it's like a reset. When you reboot your computer, it's like you got a fresh software, you know, connection. Mm -hmm. So that way our higher self and our, our guides, our angels, they can all, you know, give you the messages with the utmost clarity. And then the second, the third thing is to be able to have a practice where you are aware of where your aura starts and stops. So a lot of mistakes people make is they may be very gregarious or outgoing, but they come home and they're, they're just flattened. And it's because they went out into the world or even on online, it happens. You're plugging into everybody and everything and they're all jumping into your energetic field. And then you're overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. So people don't, we don't know, nobody's taught us how to have a healthy, clean, fresh aura, how to stay present and not go into somebody else's energetic field. Like, what do you do when you go there and you come back feeling really crappy? Have you ever had a call yeah. or a phone call with somebody and you were feeling great? Then after you talk to them, you're like, oh man, I want to commit suicide. <laughs> so that's what happened. It's their energy. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we just blame ourselves or we think something's wrong with us or we can't identify it. So the, the, the beautiful thing is I, I teach people to use my stress buster and they can just run those energies, the cosmic and earth energies in our channels. It's kind of like having an acupuncture session, right? Just keep those channels flowing. The body and the spirit know what to do when they're clear. Yeah. Amazing. That's key. That's a process. So right those there. are the basic ones. And then being able to reclaim your energy. If you've gone on an adventure, you've had a, an event or a project, you've left your energy in that event. Oh, it was great. There's no question. You manifested a pile of money and all these people were praising you. However, your energy's still there. Yep. So in order to get back on track and be present and to continue to, you know, the momentum of manifesting, you have to re reclaim that. Yeah, energy. absolutely. And the best way to do that is to give you a call, reach out to you. To all the people that are listening, you can go to chakra-clearing.com. That's C-H-A-K-R-I-clearing.com. Connect with Amira. Uh, have your psychic reading done. I did it. It was amazing. Looking forward to continuing to work with you in the future. Um, to all the people that were listening on Apple and Spotify, thank you so much. Uh, go ahead and su subscribe, share it with your friends. To all the people watching on YouTube, I'm going to drop the link to all of Amira's socials and her website and how you can connect with her below. Amira, it was nothing short of a pleasure again to have you on the podcast today. Thank you so much for your time. Is there anything you want to leave the audience with today? You're a manifester. You're a creator. Go do That's it. it. Go do it. Go do it. Be present. Be meditate. It. Be it. Right. Exactly. Thank you That's so it. much, Zach. It's such My a joy. My pleasure, Mira. Have a wonderful day. Wishing you all the health, wealth, success, and happiness for this year. And uh, we'll connect again soon. I wonder.